Vasubandhu Sanskrit, traditional Chinese, Shi Chin Pinyin, Shi Chin, Wiley, Dbyig Nyan Florida, 4th to 5th century CE was an influential Buddhist monk and scholar from Gandhara. Vasubandhu was a philosopher who wrote on the Abhidharma from the perspectives of the Sarvastivada and Satrantika schools. Along with his half-brother Asanga, he was also one of the main founders of the Yogacara school after his conversion to Mahayana Buddhism. Vasubandhu's Abhidharmaka Sakarika, commentary on the treasury of the Abhidharma, is widely used in Tibetan and East Asian Buddhism as the major source for non-Mahayana Abhidharma philosophy. His philosophical verse works set forth the standard for the Indian Yogacara metaphysics of appearance only, Vijñapti Matra, which has been described as a form of epistemological idealism, phenomenology, and close to Immanuel Kant's transcendental idealism. Apart from this, he wrote several commentaries, works on logic, argumentation and devotional poetry. Vasubandhu is one of the most influential thinkers in the Indian Buddhist philosophical tradition. In Jodo Shinshu, he is considered the second patriarch and in Chan Buddhism, he is the 21st patriarch. <laughs> Life and works Born in Peshawar, present-day Pakistan, Vasubandhu was the half-brother of Asanga, another key personage in the founding of the Yogacara philosophy. Vasubandhu's name means, the kinsman of abundance. He and Asanga are members of the six ornaments, or six great commentators on the Buddha's teachings. He was contemporaneous with Chandragupta I, father of Samudragupta. This information temporally places this Vasubandhu in the 4th century CE. The earliest biography of Vasubandhu was translated into Chinese by Paramartha 499 Vasubandhu initially studied with the Buddhist Sarvastivada also called Vebasika, who upheld the Mahavabhasa school which was dominant in Gandhara, and then later moved to Kashmir to study with the heads of the orthodox Sarvastivada branch there. After returning home he lectured on Abhidharma and composed the Abhidharmaka Sakarika verses on the treasury of the Abhidharma, a verse distillation of Sarvastivada Abhidharma teachings, which was an analysis of all factors of experience into its constituent dharmas phenomenal events. However Vasubandhu had also begun to question Sarvastivada orthodoxy for some time, and had studied with the Satantrika teacher Manaratha. Due to this, he then went on to publish an auto-commentary to his own verses, criticizing the Sarvastivada system from a Satrantika viewpoint also called Darstantika. He is later said to have converted to Mahayana beliefs under the influence of his brother Asanga, whereupon he composed a number of voluminous treatises, especially on Yogacara doctrines and Mahayana sutras. Most influential in the East Asian Buddhist tradition have been the Vimsadakavijñaptamatratasiddhita, 20 verses on consciousness only with its commentary Vimsati Kavarti, the Trimsika Vijñaptamatrata, the Thirty Verses on Consciousness Only, and the Three Natures Exposition, Trisvabhavanardesa. Vasubandhu also wrote a text on Buddhist hermeneutics, the proper mode of exposition Vyayayukti. Vasubandhu thus became a major Mahayana master, scholar and debater, famously defeating the Samkhya philosophers in debate in front of the Gupta king Vikramaditya variously identified as Chandragupta II or Skandagupta at Ayodhya, who is said to have rewarded him with 300,000 pieces of gold. Vasubandhu used the money he made from royal patronage and debating victories to build Buddhist monasteries and hospitals. He was prolific, writing a large number of other works, including Panyukaskanda Prakarana explanation of the five aggregates Karmasiddhi Prakarana a treatise on karma Vyayayukti proper mode of exposition Vidavidi rules for debate Katusataka Sastra Mahayana Satadharma Prakasamukha Sastra Amitayas Sutrapadisa instruction on the Amitabha Sutra Discourse on the Pure Land Vinaptamatrata Sastra, Treatise on Consciousness Only, Mahayana Samgrahabhasya, Commentary to the Summary of the Great Vehicle of Asanga, Dharmadharmatavabhagavarti, Commentary on Distinguishing Elements from Reality, Madhyantavabhagavasya, Commentary on Distinguishing the Middle from the Extremes, Mahayana Sutralamkarabhasya, Commentary on the Ornament to the Great Vehicle Discourses. 
Dasapumikabhasya Commentary on the Ten Stages Sutra Commentary on the Aksayamatinardesa Sutra Commentary on the Diamond Sutra Commentary on the Lotus Sutra Paramartha Saptati, a critique of Samkhya Two Vasubandhas theory Eric Frauwallner, a mid 20th century Buddhologist, sought to distinguish two Vasubandhas, one the Yogacaran and the other a Satrantika, but this view has largely fallen from favor in part on the basis of the anonymous Abhidharma Dipa, a critique of the Abhidharmaka Sakarika which clearly identifies Vasubandhu as the sole author of both groups of writings. According to Dan Lusthaus, since the progression and development of his thought is so strikingly evident in these works, and the similarity of vocabulary and style of argument so apparent across the texts, the theory of two Vasubandhas has little merit." Scholarly consensus on this question has generally moved away from Frauwallner's two authors position. Philosophy <laughs> <laughs> Abhidharma Vasubandhu's Verses on the Treasury of the Abhidharma contains a description of all 75 dharmas phenomenal events, and then outlines the entire Sarvastivada doctrine including, "...meditation practices, cosmology, theories of perception, causal theories, the causes and elimination of moral problems, the theory of rebirth, and the qualities of a Buddha." The Treasury and its commentary also expound all kinds of arguments relating to the Sarvastivada Abhidharma and critique those arguments from a Satantrika perspective in the commentary. Major arguments include an extensive critique of the self Atman and, Pujala and a critique of the Sarvastivada theory of the existence of the dharmas of the three time periods past, present and future. In the Treasury, Vasubandhu also argued against a creator god Ishvara and against the Sarvastivada theory of Avijñaptarupa unperceived physicality or invisible physicality. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Critique of the self. Vasubandhu's critique of the self is a defense of Buddhist anatman doctrine, and also a critique of the Buddhist personalist school and Hindu view of the soul. It is intended to show the unreality of the self or person as over and above the five skandhas heaps, aggregates which make up an individual. Vasubandhu begins by outlining the soteriological motive for his argument, writing that any view which sees the self as having independent reality e.g. the Hindu view is not conductive to nirvana. Vasubandhu then evaluates the idea of the self from epistemic grounds pramana. Vasubandhu states that what is real can only be known from perception pratyaksa or inference anumana. Perception allows one to observe directly the objects of the six sense spheres. Inference allows one to infer the existence of sense organs. However, there is no such inference for a solid real self apart from the stream of constantly changing sense perceptions and mental activity of the sense spheres. Vasubandhu also argues that because the self is not causally efficient, it is mere convention and a conceptual construction. This argument is mainly against the Buddhist Pujalavada school who held a view of a person that was dependent on the five aggregates, yet was also distinct, in order to account for the continuity of personality. Vasubandhu sees this as illogical, for him, the self is made up of constantly changing sensory organs, sense impressions, ideas and mental processes and any imagined unity of selfhood is a false projection. Vasubandhu also uses this analysis of the stream of consciousness to attack non-Buddhist Hindu views of the Atman. Vasubandhu shows that the Hindu view of the self as controller is refuted by an analysis of the flux and disorder of mental events and the inability of the supposed self to control our minds and thoughts in any way we would like. If the self is truly an eternal uncaused agent, it should be unaffected by mere physical and mental causes, and it also seems difficult to explain how such a force existing independently outside of the mind could causally interact with it. Vasubandhu also answers several common objections to the Buddhist not-self view such as how karma works without a self and what exactly undergoes rebirth. Vasubandhu points to the causal continuum of aggregates, processes which undergoes various changes leading to future karmic events and rebirth. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Momentariness. During Vasubandhu's era, the philosophy of space and time was an important issue in Buddhist philosophy. The Sarvastivadin tradition which Vasubandhu studied held the view of the existence of dharmas phenomenal events in all three times past, present, future. This was said to be their defining theoretical position, hence their name Sarvastivada is Sanskrit for theory of all exists. In contrast to this eternalist view, the Satrantika, a rival offshoot, held the doctrine of extreme momentariness, a form of presentism only the present moment exists. In the Abhidharmakasakarika, Vasubandhu puts forth the Sarvastivadin theory, and then in his commentary Basia, he critiques this theory and argues for the momentariness of the Satrantika. He also later wrote the Karma Siddhi Prakarana, exposition establishing karma, which also expounded the momentariness view Kasanikavada. Vasubandhu's view here is that each dharma comes into existence only for a moment in which it discharges its causal efficacy and then self-destructs. The stream of experience is then a causal series of momentary dharmas. The issue of continuity and transference of karma is explained in the latter text by an exposition of the storehouse consciousness, alaya which stores karmic seeds bija and survives rebirth. Yogacara theories According to Dan Lusthaus, Vasubandhu's major ideas are Whatever we are aware of, think about, experience, or conceptualize, occurs to us nowhere else than within consciousness. External objects do not exist. Karma is collective and consciousness is intersubjective. All factors of experience dharmas can be catalogued and analyzed. Buddhism is a method for purifying the stream of consciousness from contaminations and defilements. Each individual has eight types of consciousness, but enlightenment or awakening requires overturning their basis, such that consciousness is turned into unmediated cognition Topic. Appearance only Vasubandhu's main Yogacara works Vimsatika and Trimsaka put forth the theory of Vijñaptimatra, which has been rendered variously as representation only, consciousness only, and appearance only. While some scholars such as Lusthaus see Vasubandhu as expounding a phenomenology of experience, others Sean Butler see him as expounding some form of idealism similar to Kant or George Berkeley. The 20 verses begins by stating, In Mahayana philosophy, reality is viewed as being consciousness only, mind sata, thought manas, consciousness chit, and perception pratyaksa are synonyms. The word, mind. Sita includes mental states and mental activities in its meaning. The word, only, is intended to deny the existence of any external objects of consciousness. We recognize, of course, that, mental representations seem to be correlated with external non -mental objects, but this may be no different from situations in which people with vision disorders see hairs, moons, and other things that are not there. One of Vasubandhu's main arguments in the twenty verses is the dream argument, which he uses to show that it is possible for mental representations to appear to be restricted by space and time. He uses the example of mass hallucinations in Buddhist hell to defend against those who would doubt that mental appearances can be shared. To counter the argument that mere mental events have no causal efficacy, he uses the example of a wet dream. Vasubandhu then turns to a mariological critique of physical theories, such as Buddhist atomism and Hindu monism, showing that his appearance only view is much more parsimonious and rational. The 30 verses also outlines the Yogacara theory of the eight consciousnesses and how each one can be overcome on the stages of enlightenment, turning consciousness into unmediated cognition by cleansing the stream of consciousness from contaminations and defilements. The treatise on Buddha nature was extremely influential in East Asian Buddhism by propounding the concept of Tathagatagarbha Buddha nature. <laughs> Three natures and non-duality The Thirty Verses and the Three Natures Exposition 
Trisvabhavanirdesha does not, like the twenty verses, argue for appearance only, but assumes it and uses it to explain the nature of experience which is of three natures, or three modes. These are the fabricated nature the dependent and the absolute The fabricated nature is the world of everyday experience and mental appearances. Dependent nature is the causal process of the arising of the fabricated nature while the absolute nature is things as they are in themselves, with no subject-object distinction. According to Vasubandhu, the absolute, reality itself dharmata, is non-dual, and the dichotomy of perception into perceiver and perceived is actually a conceptual fabrication. For Vasubandhu, to say that something is non-dual is that it is both conceptually non-dual and perceptually non-dual. To say that I exist is to conceptually divide the causal flux of the world into self and other, a false construct. Just the same, to say that an observed object is separate from the observer is also to impute a false conception into the world as it really is, perception only. Vasubandhu uses the analogy of a magician who uses a magic spell dependent nature, conceptual construction to make a piece of wood the absolute, non-duality look like an elephant fabricated nature, duality. The basic problem for living beings who suffer is that they are fooled by the illusion into thinking that it is real, that self and duality exists. True wisdom is seeing through this illusion. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Logic. Vasubandhu contributed to Buddhist logic and is held to have been the origin of formal logic in the Indian logico-epistemological tradition. Vasubandhu was particularly interested in formal logic to fortify his contributions to the traditions of dialectical contestability and debate. Anakar holds that A method for argumentation is the only work on logic by Vasubandhu which has to any extent survived. It is the earliest of the treatises known to have been written by him on the subject. This is all the more interesting because Vada Vidi marks the dawn of Indian formal logic. The title, Method for Argumentation, indicates that Vasubandhu's concern with logic was primarily motivated by the wish to mold formally flawless arguments, and is thus a result of his interest in philosophical debate. This text also paved the way for the later developments of Dignaga and Dharmakirti in the field of logic. Topic. Notes Topic. Works Abhidharma Kosha Beshiyam 4 Vols, Vasubandhu, translated into English by Leo Pruden based on Louis de la Vallée Poussin's French translation, Asian Humanities Press, Berkeley, 1988-90. Labhidharmakosa de Vasubandhu, Traduit et Annoté par Louis de la Vallée Poussin, Paul Guthner, Paris. 1923–1931 Vol. 1 Vol. 2 Vol. 3 Vol. 4 Vol. 5 Vol. 6 Internet Archive PDF. Stefan Anaker, Seven Works of Vasubandhu Mutilal Banarsidass, Delhi, 1984, 1998 Ernst Steinkellner and Shweju Lee eds, Vasubandhu's Panyukaskandaka Wien, Verlag der Österreichischen Akademie der Wissenschaften, 2008 Sanskrit texts from the Tibetan Autonomous Region, 4 Dharmamitra, Trans. Vasubandhu's Treatise on the Bodhisattva Vow, Kalavinka Press 2009, ISBN 978 one 935413 9